Oh, boy, it's Santa. Ho, ho, ho. It's just not Xmas without Santa Bot. Hello, Internet. I'm Ren, and I want to talk about Futurama Season 11, Episode 6, I Know What You Did Next Xmas. It's a fun holiday adventure that fits in well with the other Futurama Xmas episodes that we've gotten so far. Mobsters beating up a shopkeeper for protection money. Very naughty. Shopkeepers not paying their protection money. Exactly as naughty. Despite some mild inconsistencies, I always love an appearance by Robot Santa. Cookie. And there are a lot of fun little moments with the characters. But now we're going to go ahead and go through the episode in a little bit more detail. So consider this your warning that the video will contain spoilers for I Know What You Did Next Xmas and Futurama generally. We start the episode with the Planet Express gang decorating their Xmas tree. Although this time it is a classic evergreen tree instead of a palm tree like we've seen in some of the other specials. They're also setting up their Santa defenses. Razor lights in place. Roger. Then stand back. I love the gingerbread plating. <laughs> A festive and functional upgrade from the plain metal plating we've seen in the other Xmas episodes. Bender receives a sinister card in his stocking, a la I Know What You Did Last Summer. I Know What You Did Next Xmas. The Wong Croakers, and also Fry, watch an animated holiday special about Santa together that explains how he became the evil menace we all know and fear. Xmas began in the year 2801, when the friendly robot company developed a high-powered mechanical Santa. Something went tragically mashugana. His naughty, nice sense of malfunction. The professor decides to use his time machine. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Which now goes backwards as well as forwards uh, to go back and fix Santa. My plan is to back up to the year 2801 when things first went wrong and materialize behind Santa as he exits this very fireplace. We get a fun reverse Big Bang sequence as he heads back after flipping Santa's switch. By the scenic route. <laughs> being crushed by all the matter that ever was. And here we are, the future. I like that there's only one folding chair this time, and you can see the others are folded leaning against the wall since Fry and Bender aren't along for the ride. The professor uncharacteristically gives everyone the week off to spend some time with their loved ones and celebrate a much less deadly holiday. We got non-stop busy work. Oh, fuff. Let's stop pretending we do anything around here. Everyone, take the week off and be with your so-called loved ones. It's a human resources miracle. We get a cute montage of everyone with their families. <laughs> but Bender and Zoidberg are the only ones with no family to visit, so they get drunk on Dumpster Nog. I brought dumpster nog, and not the kind for kids. Rings, four, four something, something, three, something, three, something else, two, no one cares. cares. And, and a partridge drowned in our nog. This stuff is strong. Hey, how many glasses have we had it? None. This is just from the fumes. I'm always amused by the inconsistency of Bender being able to get drunk from alcohol when historically lack of alcohol is what makes him drunk. You've been up all night not drinking, haven't you? Hey, what I don't do is none of your business. Please, Bender, have some malt liquor. If not for yourself, then for the people who love you. But I digress. Poor Zoidberg laments that he has no family since his kind die when they reproduce. My species dies when we reproduce. So if I had a family, I'd be dead. Which is true. You mean you have to choose between a life without sex and a gruesome death? Yes. Tough call. But he does have Uncle Zoid, though, right? Uncle Zoid! You're looking young enough to be thrown back! Rich nephew! Fry heads to Leela's parents' place after spending some time with Farnsworth and Cubert and charms her grandmother. For my parents? And my grandma? Ah, yes. The Rose of the Sewers. Mwah. Leela, if you don't bury him, I will. 
Zoidberg and Bender decide to kidnap the now supposedly good Santa to ruin the holiday for everyone else. We can drunk drive the time machine to last Xmas and kidnap him. Then he won't be able to deliver presents this Xmas. And here we are, last Xmas. Bite my glittering festive ass. Unhand me, you naughty boys. They shove him in an old meat locker, but he escapes. Uh-oh, we woke the meat up. Santa smashes up the time machine, but slips in Nog and apparently gets electrocuted. They try to get rid of the body, first in the harbor. What's with the bloated floater? I admit it, we murdered- oh. Uh, just, uh, dumping some toxic waste, officers. Huh, guess you gotta put it somewhere. Carry on, night dumpers. Then with an ill-conceived acid bath. They're, um, they're not having much luck. Remind me, is this the ground floor? Then, the Planet Express crew and all of their families return to the office. Surprise! Bah, humbug! Just so that Bender and Zoidberg won't be alone, in a very sweet gesture. Merry Xmas, you guys. We didn't know you hadn't been invited anywhere. We came as soon as we realized what losers you are. Bender and Zoidberg panic and repurpose the Santa corpse into a punch bowl and beer cooler, and the gang is none the wiser. Everyone brought their turduckins. Turdolphin! Huh. And Kiff brought his turdolphin. Finally, an old-time happy Xmas with presents for everyone. They're all excited for good Santa's arrival. Santa should be here any minute now. But he zooms up and starts blasting. <laughs> And the professor realizes his time travel shenanigans are why Santa was evil in the first place. I personally went back in time and reversed his naughty nice sensor. Oh. He flipped the switch. When he was first built, it was in the correct position. But when I went back in time, I flipped it around. Me. Santa comes through the chimney and everyone hides. Then Zoidberg and Bender arrive in the time machine and kidnap him. It turns out they didn't go to last Xmas to get him. Zoidberg accidentally sent them forward to next Xmas, which at the time was this current Xmas since their plot occurred a couple of days before. I can't hold it in anymore. We, we kidnapped and murdered Santa. <laughs> Bender and Zoidberg confess to the murder, and the professor tells them that they're heroes for stopping evil Santa. Stop blubbering, you bloobs! You're heroes! What, Rose? The Santa head comes back to life and tells Bender that he was the one who wrote the menacing notes from the future. I sent the notes from the future. Because I murdered you? No, because I knew what you did next Xmas. You became friends with Zoidberg, so I'm blackmailing you. No. No! I'll admit the messages don't exactly make sense because it doesn't explain how Santabot did it, since as far as we know, he can't time travel or see the future. But I'm happy enough to just ignore it since it isn't a major part of the episode or anything. It's good that Santabot is still clearly alive, though, because it's just not Xmas without Santa. We close out the episode with a Futurama rendition of 12 Days of Christmas by Kwanzaa Bot. Bot. Yeah. Give me 12 slugs of slurping, 11 benders burping, 10 episodes die. Kwanzaa Bot was actually voiced by Coolio, who died last year, so this is a posthumous release and the episode is dedicated to his memory. Overall, I really enjoyed this episode. I know what you did next Xmas is pretty good and it fits in well with the other Xmas specials. I think it's arguably one of the better ones. My little brother and I have a tradition where every year at Christmas we watch all of the Futurama holiday specials together, so it's always fun to have a new one to add to the list. I really enjoyed the little scenes of everyone's different Xmas festivities and seeing the various characters that make up the Planet Express crew's families again. The little gags with the Xmas stockings were also fun. The mini stockings for Nibbler's worms are super cute, and I love that Bender's stocking looks like a robot leg. And it is adorable that one of the stockings over the fireplace when the professor goes back in time to when Planet Express was a meat market says Lil Schnitzel on it. Did this building even exist in 2801? Yeah. 
But back then, it was some kind of meat market where butchers would hook up and grind their sausages. The time travel shenanigans and their resolution were very classically Futurama, adding a fun sci-fi element to this episode. I liked that neither the Professor or Bender and Zoidberg's expeditions in the time machine went exactly as planned, and I laughed at the little reference to Roswell that ends well. But I'll go alone to minimize the chance of anyone becoming their own grandfather. These things happen. No, they don't. I can't help but note that this episode doesn't even come close to competing with the late Philip J. Fry, though, but I would never expect one of the holiday specials to rise to the level of one of Futurama's best episodes ever, so I'm not mad at it for falling short or anything. I think this episode's goal was to make a fun Xmas special where we got to see some familiar characters and they succeeded. I'm a little disappointed we got the Croker kids and Kubert and Dwight in an episode together but didn't really have time to see them interact at all. So close! But I did enjoy the pairing of Bender and Zoidberg. They play off of each other so well and it's always nice to see Zoidberg have a friend. I wonder where his girlfriend from Stench and Stenchability went though. Anyways, in terms of how much I enjoyed it, I think this might be one of the better episodes this season. There's something about it that finally feels a bit more like the Futurama we all know and love. I can't quite explain what was different with this episode compared to the rest this season. It just worked for me. But that is just my opinion. What did you think about I Know What You Did Next Xmas? How are you liking this season so far? Let me know in the comments section down below. Like, share, and subscribe for more videos. See you next time. Peter Zane. Jingle bells, Zoidberg smells just like rotten eggs. <gasps> I'm immortalized in song.